Learn Excel from Mr. Excel Podcast, episode 2355. Can ChatGPT write Power Query code? And let's change that. Can ChatGPT write useful Power Query code? Or can ChatGPT write working Power Query code? Let's do this. Learn Excel from Mr. Excel Podcast, episode 2355. Can Power Query delete records when both column C equals D and E equals F? Today's test, a Power Query question from Laura B, and you're going to see three answers. A novice, I know that my code is not efficient. And then this amazing new thing that everyone's talking about, ChatGPT, and then an actual expert who knows what they're doing. So in this video, you're going to see three solutions to a Power Query question, and I'm sure you will have other solutions. And we'll take a look at why all the hype about ChatGPT. Am I really missing something? All right, so it's a video about ChatGPT. Just a few nights ago on Jimmy Kimmel, he said, reviews of brand new technology never age well. I'm recording this on January 12th, 2023, using tests that I did on January 1st, January 11th, and January 12th. If you're watching this a year from now or 10 years from now, uh, you know, ChatGPT has taken over the world. There are robotic overlords and, you know, sorry if, you know, I wasn't completely positive today. ChatGPT even says, this is a free research preview. Your feedback will help us improve. They, they say they're not perfect, but I mean, a lot of people are talking, hey, it can create Excel formulas. It can write VBA code. It can write Power Query code, you know, write blog posts, optimize blog posts. Uh, I've written 67 books. Maybe it'll write my 68th book. Who knows? But the thing is, I hate to even show it right now because if you go and try it, on January 10th and 11th, I got this screen. ChatGPT is at capacity right now. Get notified when we're back. So if you don't already have an account, you can't even get an account at and hopefully they'll figure out a way to solve that. Really interesting. You know, at the Mr. Excel message board, the community there has answered over a million Excel questions. And right here, I think January 4th, 2023 is the first time that someone popped in here and said, hey, I actually used ChatGPT and it didn't know to put the sub dims and end sub in, but the rest of the code that it gave me for this simple little problem, right code that removes all rows in a column, which either have a value that is bold or empty, uh, it worked, right? I mean, that, that's impressive. Uh, a little AI that's able to generate some VBA code. But also simple, super interesting, over at Stack Overflow, currently they've temporarily banned the posting of ChatGPT answers. Uh, and they, they explain it. It's a great explanation. And boy, I can, this resonates with me. Um, ChatGPT produces answers that have a high rate of being incorrect, although they look like they might be good. When I was recording this episode, when it gave me Power Query, I was like so excited. I, I, I can't even post it uh, because I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. It looked like it was going to work. Um, but here's the problem. These answers are so easy to produce. A lot of people started using ChatGP to post answers at Stack Overflow, like thousands of answers. Um, but then you need someone who knows what they're doing to do a detailed read uh, with at least some subject matter expertise in order to determine that the answer is actually bad. So right now, Stack Overflow has banned ChatGPT. All right, so that's a little overview, overview of ChatGPT. Let's let's get to today's problem. Laura sent in this question. Uh, Laura had been in my class and seen me uh, do an intro to Power Query. She's like, okay, I'm trying to use Power Query, but here's what I have to do. I have to find every record where C equals D and where E equals F. If that's true, I want to delete those rows. Okay, and I, I just, I knew I could solve this in Power Query, but I knew that I would solve it badly. Um, Laura even was nice enough to mark the rows that were the match. And of course, she has a much larger data set than this. You know, this was just a small, small sample. Okay, so, um, First step here is I'm going to solve this in Power Query using the Power Query interface. We have a table with uh, a name called data, right? So data from table or range. And ultimately at the end, I want to filter out the rows where item status equals item type, part number equals base part. But the problem that I have is that I can't write that in M code. I'm going to have to use the Power Query interface. And 
So looking for item status equals item type, that's a conditional column. So add column, conditional column. Easy enough to do this. We'll call this C equals D. It doesn't matter what you call it. You could have just left it the way it was. Uh, and so we're going to say if item status is equal to not a particular value, but a column. If item status is equal to item type, then out here we're going to you know just put something like a one. I'm going to put a one, otherwise a zero. Now I have a second clause, an and clause, and that and clause has to say if part number is equal to base part. But here in the Power Query window, the only thing I can do is an else if, right? That's not what I'm looking for. I need it. I need an and. All right. So I, at this point, I'm already frustrated. I know that this is going to be a horribly painful solution. So we have C equals D out there, and then a second column that's going to be called E is f and this is going to say is the part number equal to the base part then put a one otherwise zero click ok all right and this seems really silly uh, both true and so we're going to say this first thing c equals d plus e is f Click OK. All right, and now anything that out here that has a two are the ones that we want to delete. Simple enough, open the filter dropdown, clear the two, click OK. Uh, we don't need any of these columns that I added, so all of these, click, shift click, right click, remove columns, and we end up with this code, right? All these extra steps. Uh, so we added a conditional column, added a second conditional column, added a custom column, filter the rows, remove the columns, uh, ends up being 10 rows of Power Query. And, you know, I, I feel bad. I know that this is not the most efficient way to write this. Um, and frankly, I'm just too lazy to go get Ken Polt's book, Master Your Data on Power Query, to go figure out how to write that. And um, so, you know, that's, sorry, Laura, that's my solution. You know, but then I, I had seen ChatGPT write VBA code. I had personally used it to create some formulas. And I had heard that it could do Power Query code. So let, I was like, you know, let's see if, if ChatGPT can improve my code. Here we are. I had a new chat down here. And we'll send. Here's an example of the Power Query M code that we can use to remove rows from the table named data if both conditions are true. Look at this. Holy smokes. That's amazing. No, stop. I was prematurely excited. I'm just cutting to the next seven minutes that happened. Let's summarize it like this. Uh, you know, so here's what I asked. Here's what they gave me. I was excited about it. I could tell that their let source equals data wasn't enough. And I knew enough to take the code from my original query and change the source, add in change type, and then use that variable name there, right? But the code still doesn't work. But you see, now I'm in trouble because now I have code that I didn't write, I don't understand, and I have no clue where to go. So I turned to my subject matter expert, Smosker, right? And he took a look at the code. He says, yeah, this code isn't going to work, right? Table remove rows uh, will remove 10 rows starting from the sixth row by using the following code, right? But ChatGPT only gave two parameters. So, you know, basically here, that two would remove the third row because it's zero base counting. Um, but they're not passing it a number. They're passing it a variable that's holding a table and that's not compatible with table remove rows. And it's totally not the right function to use here. And beyond that, doing the filter one row at a time is very inefficient. And life pro tip, by putting a calculation in the in clause, we can't see that result. It makes it very hard to debug. So just a complete fail here from chat GPT. So back to Laura's question, what's the efficient way to write this code? Uh, first off, from Boolean logic, we know that if we're trying to delete where A equals B and C equals D, you can keep where 
either of those are not the same, right? So you know, it's, it's the same logic there. Uh, and so we have the source and change type exactly from the Power Query editor, although uh, Smosker is always careful to get rid of those spaces, which means we don't need the quotes and the hash sign anymore. Uh, result equals table.select rows, each item type not equal to item status or part number not equal to base part. Now, as far as I know, there's no way to build this in the Power Query editor. Of course, someone down in the YouTube comments will let me know that there's a secret hidden thing if I hover over you know, this invisible icon that frees that up, right? So there's the code, uh, Laura, that would work efficiently and you, know, you just need to go into the advanced editor to create that. You know, and as far as ChatGPT, he, just some quick tests. I was very impressed. One of the first tests I did back on January 1st is a question from one of my Power Excel seminars, and it did a great job of generating an if with an and function inside, and that was beautiful. Uh, and then I hit it with, all right, give me a form of the test if the value in A2 is a prime number. And I was sort of impressed that they came up with this. This was their answer on January 1st, and they cautioned me that it only works for small numbers. But when I actually tested it, it doesn't work for three or for five. So kind of a fail there. And then this one is really wild. On January 11th, I asked the same question again. And there are several ways to test if the value in A2 is a prime number. But one common method is to use the following formula, which looked pretty clever, but it doesn't work. Right? And then, you know, look. I had this uncle, when I was a kid, would always go over to the uncle's house and he would speak with authority on any topic, right? Even if he had no clue what he was talking about. You have the same uncle, right? I'm going to change his name. I'm going to call him Uncle Bees. You know, you would be there and you'd be so impressed and then we'd be driving home. My dad would be like, that guy is so full of shit. And if you fact checked anything, you know, it wasn't true. I, I think that my late Uncle Bees is secretly the guy behind ChatGPT. Somehow, you know, he's come up come back from the great beyond and is running things because now on January 11th, ChatGPT then goes on to say another way is to use the is prime function in Excel and even with authority says that it's only available in Office 365 or later. Bullshit. It's not available at all. This is not a function. Why do all of these AIs keep thinking that is prime is a function? Does anyone out there have is prime? Is there some top secret beta that I'm not aware of? All right, so look, I got one of my four queries right. This will improve. There will come a day where it puts us all out of work and, you know, yeah. But right now, right now, January 12th, 2023, um, you have to know what the heck you're doing if you're going to use this. Like, you have to know the answer before you go to ChatGPT and ask them for the answer. Um, and on the days where it's just over capacity, you know, too bad. Um, so today not impressed. Well, hey, I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another netcast from Mr. Excel.